So when it comes to on-page SEO, like the example I showed you in the previous video for plumbers in Presbury, um, a lot of people do make mistakes. Now, some of those mistakes are, and they, they for, they'll form some of your questions, how long should my landing page be? Should it be 500 words? Should it be 1,000 words? Should it be 5,000 words? And how many title tags should I have? How many internal links should I have? How many times should I add the keywords throughout the content? What else is important from an on-page point of view? And this is all stuff that I'm going to cover. Now, no one can give you a blanket statement saying that every landing page should be 500 words or 1,000 words long. That's not the right answer. It depends on the competition. And a great tool out there, now you've got the SEMrush SEO content template, you've got Surfer SEO, you have Page Optimizer Pro, which is the one that I've been using for a number of years, and that analyzes your search term and compares your website or your page to that of the top 10 search results. And then it will tell you an average word count, semantically related keywords, the headings that your competition have got, and so much else, which allows you to then fully optimize your on-page SEO. And that is how it's done. No one can randomly guess and say, this page should be the exact same as that page. Now for Presbury, 300 words might be enough. For some other area, it might be 700 words. That comes down to the level of competition. So I've done um, <coughs> the Plumbers and Presbury page and I've run it through POP and we can see that it's got an optimization score of 14. The goal is to get to 100. Now, not everyone gets to 100, um, but the word count on that particular page is 643. The target is 880. That's the average what everyone else has got. So we are a little bit short on that. Now, when it comes to page title, we don't have any plumbing, no heating. Everyone else has got plumbing and heating on theirs. So we don't have that. That's something we should be implementing. Now, subheadings throughout the content. We should be using plumbing, plumbers, heating, Again, we're not using it um, in the subheadings. Now, throughout the main article itself, you see the green dots, which is, we've mentioned the word quote, but we don't really have anything else um, used in the content. Semantically related keywords, um, you know, other things that other people have got on their pages, heating company, um, and stuff like that. Again, these are things that we can add in. Now we can see the competitors title tags. We can see what bold terms have got, italic terms, images and everything else. Now, basically for anything that we do, we can have a look at POP and optimize that content further. Now, I'm going to come back out of this and go to my own website because it's a much better example. It's very hard on a very niche specific uh, page like that. Now, I'm going to go to my page and it's a, a URL on my website that targets SEO training in Middlesbrough. And I'm going to show you again you know, my score is slightly higher than the Plumber's Press, but it's 27.6. I've got SEO training, Middlesbrough, SEO Middlesbrough, all in the title tag, so a lot of that's good. I don't actually have, uh, on the page title, sorry, I don't actually have SEO training, Middlesbrough, and I should probably be using that. Um, subheadings, I could be using digital marketing, um, certificates, and, and all that kind of stuff, courses, uh, course, there's so many other semantically related keywords which are going to give Google a much better understanding of what my page is about. And then throughout the main content, again, I've got a lot of greens, but I've also got a lot of reds. So I've got nothing about certificates. I've got nothing about classroom, tutor support, SEO courses, 
digital marketing I don't have on there enough, the area, Middlesbrough, I don't have on there enough. So that's why my page, if I Google SEO training Middlesbrough, um, I think it does rank in uh, the top three search results, or it did. Um, it's actually at the top. Now, sometimes you don't need to go all out and add all of that stuff, but that's because that's had non-competitive keywords. If you want to be the best, or more importantly, want to rank for more keywords, then you would want to add this in because my SEO training page probably ranks for five or 10 search terms at most. Do I want that to rank for 100 search terms? Should that be ranking for digital marketing courses, Middlesbrough, as well as SEO courses? It should. And I would have a subheading on that page saying, digital marketing courses, Middlesbrough, and just write something along the lines of, within these courses, um, we do touch on other digital marketing things, such as paid, such as, you know, all of the other things that constitute the word digital marketing. So that is the difference between you solely focusing on one keyword or having a whole bunch of keywords ranking on your page. And as I say, going back to the plumbers and Presbury, we could have emergency stuff on there, we could have a whole bunch of other stuff. Because their competition don't have that, it's not flagging up in the tool. But you've got to also use common sense. These tools are not the be all and end all of everything. You've got to think outside the box, use the tools, implement that stuff, and try and get everything onto that one landing page, whether it be emergency plumbers, whether it be whatever. And again, the example I've given you in my website is a page that's been half asked basically, and it could have been done a lot better, and we could have had digital marketing, talking about the tutor, being me, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and talking about certificates, and everything else, which would have allowed me to get from 864 words up to probably the target word count of 1600 words as well and uh, that page would probably skyrocket <coughs> not in the terms of the position for SEO training Middlesbrough but a whole bunch of other search terms will go around now also what you want to do with these semantically related keywords is just make sure that you show Google what these pages are actually about and they fully understand it if you leave it very loose and there's lots of red dots Again, Google are not going to have a full understanding of what your page is actually about. And that is the point in SEO, is joining those dots and giving them a much better understanding. So one, don't guess your target keyword count. Actually use a tool like this, Suffer or Same Rush content template to give you an actual idea of what the other guys are doing. Do consider using subheadings to add in stuff. So for example, my SEO training Middlesbrough page, I've got like SEO training Middlesbrough and this whole bunch of stuff that says I do training in Middlesbrough. Now under that, I could have SEO certification Middlesbrough as a subheading and talk about the certification once you complete the course, blah, 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 and have about 200 words of text talking about certification and the benefits of maybe buying trust and showing your potential employers and all that stuff that you've got a certificate. Um, over and above that, I could probably touch on digital marketing courses, Middlesbrough, and again, subheading digital marketing courses, Middlesbrough, and just say, not only do I do SEO, but I can talk to you about social media, I can talk to you about YouTube, I can talk to you about a whole range of other digital marketing stuff, and train you and show you how all of that stuff works. And again, I would then be allowed to be found for digital marketing courses Middlesbrough. You do not need a separate page for digital marketing courses Middlesbrough. You can just have a subheading and make sure that you have a page that is really good on that. Now, I'm going to show you an example. What is SEO? On how this works really well. Now, we can look at a guy that ranks really well. I'm sure it is no... Um, new guy to your names, um, just I don't want his stuff to pop up. But what is SEO? Is a page that Neil Patel has on his website that talks about what SEO is. And this is an example of someone who has used these search terms, uh, sorry, a page to rank for multiple search terms. 
So I will come back to the page in a moment. Now, that particular page actually ranks for 3,900 words. Now, going back to the website itself, um, I don't want to do that, Neil. So step-by-step -step guide, he's got his guide here, and you'll be able to see he's got his guide, his overview, how search works. He's then got white hat versus black hat as a subheading, and he talks a bit about white hat SEO versus black hat SEO, and what those mean. He then has a whole bunch of other stuff. This page is actually 14,000 words long. Um, so I'm just scrolling down, it's, it's, it's a long read. But he's also got on-page SEO versus off-page SEO covered on that page. So where it's possible, you don't have to have tons of pages. You can have one big power page on your website that targets a whole bunch of different search terms. And he's got on-page SEO content and talking about all of that stuff. And as I say, that particular page... Um, if we look at the exact URL, and I don't know why I've just been kicked out, but just go back in. What is SEO? Um, the exact URL ranks for, let me just get the keywords. You'll be able to see it ranks for white hat SEO, black hat SEO, how to do SEO, what is SEO and how does it work. Um, all of these search terms are all done because he's got subheadings and content relating to that. So you don't have to have thousands of pages. You can actually have a power page that ranks for a whole bunch of different search terms. And that is what Neil Patel has done really well. And that is exactly how you would want to structure a local landing page. Very simple. Run it through POP. See what your target word count is. If you go slightly over that, so what? have nice subheadings and make sure you have semantically related keywords in there so that Google can say, this guy does all of the plumbing and press for the emergency stuff, 24 hours, all of that other good stuff. And from there, you would have what is essentially good on page SEO. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is internal linking to your website. Now, <laughs> on, the, on the website here, he's got some internal links that point to other pages on his website. Mainly Underfloor Heating is probably one of the big services that this guy does. So in a lot of his posts, he's going to point to his Underfloor Heating page. Um, and then he's got Underfloor Leak Detection and so on. Now basically what you want to do is again, join those dots for Google using your internal linking structure to point to the most powerful pages in your website, whether that be your thermal imaging, whether that be your underfloor heating, and all that kind of stuff. You're basically using the power of the, you're creating pages and showing Google what are the most important pages on your website by using a solid internal linking structure. And it also allows Google to be able to crawl all of your website and all of those kind of smaller location pages you can internally link all of that kind of stuff mix it all up and ensure that you have a good internal linking structure now if you want an internal linking guide linking guide um you do have a guy out there called andy drinkwater um I'm trying to find out where his internal linking guide is. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, but IQSEO. I think he's changed his domain actually. Andy Drink Water. Um, yeah, so he's he, he used to be called IQSEO. He now has it here. And uh, he talks about the importance of internal linking and why you want to do it. It's just basically a full on guide on, you know, you've got your homepage here, you've got tier one, which is your main power pages, and then tier two, tier three. Now, adding good internal links does help crawlability, but it also helps show Google what the main pages or power pages on your website are all about. Now, adding good internal links got a jump up in for this client, and then he added more, and it got another jump up. So do not underestimate the power of internal linking it is hugely important as part of your on-page SEO. So 
that is pretty much a brief overview of how to create and structure a nice landing page for local SEO and add some internal links. Make sure you do run it through a tool to see what the competition are doing and you will pretty much be in a much better position than you were prior to this.